the merit of martyrdom, the status of martyrs, and the philosophy of war in Islam. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, and the martyrs with their Lord will have their reward and their light. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path to the day of judgment. Martyrdom in the cause of Allah has a great position, a noble goal. It is Allah who chooses from among his servant whomsoever he wishes as a martyrs. As he, who, as he most high said, Allah chooses martyrs from among you and said, whosoever obeys Allah and the messenger will be among those he has blessed. The messenger, the truthful, the martyr, and the righteous, what excellent companion these are. The prophet, peace be upon him, said, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause and come to life and then get martyred and then come to life and then get martyred and then get resurrected and then get martyred. All sin of a true martyr who dies in the cause of Allah for defending his land, honor, property, or homeland are given when the first drop of his blood is shed. He is shown his seats, his seat in the paradise. He is shown his seat in the paradise, and his intercession will be accepted for 70 members of his family. The Almighty Allah said, Allah has purchased the person and the position of the believers in return for the paradise they fight in Allah's way. They kill and, and, they, and are killed. They kill and are killed. There's a true promise given by him in the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran. Who could be more faithful to his promise than Allah? So be happy with the bargain you have made. That is a supreme triumph. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, By him in whose hand my soul is, no one is wounded in Allah's cause. And Allah knows best those who are wounded in his cause. Without coming in the day of resurrection, with his wound having the color of blood, but the fragrance of musk. Even if a martyr dies, they remain alive, with their Lord rejoicing his grace and bounties. The Almighty Allah said, don't think of those who have provided for, happy with what Allah has given them of his favor, rejoicing that for those they have left behind who have yet to join them. There is no fear, nor will they grieve rejoicing in Allah's blessing and favor, and that Allah will not let the reward of the believers be lost. Allah also said, don't say that those who killed in Allah's cause are dead. They are alive, though you don't realize it. Murderdom has many forms, the most important of which are murderdom for the sake of one's homeland to defend it and protect its land and people seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, he who dies while defending his property is a martyr. He who dies in, defend, in defense of his family is a martyr. And he who dies in defense of his faith is a martyr. A man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O Messenger of Allah, what do you think if a man comes to me in order to appropriate my possessions? He, peace be upon him, said, don't surrender your position to him. The inquirer said, if he fights me, he, the prophet, remarked, then fight with him. He, the inquirer, again said, what do you think if I'm killed? The prophet observed, you would be martyr. The inquirer said, what do you think of him if I kill him? The prophet said, he would be in fire. All praise is due to Allah. Lord of the worlds, may Allah peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad, 
peace be upon him, his companion and followers. In Islam, war is enacted to confront injustice and aggression. Islam is not a religion that loves fighting or blood cheating. Rather, it tries to prevent this as long as there is a way for doing so. In Islam, the permission to fight is very limited and has a certain conditions. As the Almighty Allah said, those who have been attacked are permitted to take up arms because they have been wronged. Allah has a power to help them and says, fight in Allah's cause against those who fight you, but don't overstep the limits. Allah does not love those who overstep the limits, but if they incline toward peace, you prophet must incline toward it. You prophet must also incline towards it. And you and put your trust in Allah. He is all hearing, all knowing. The prophet peace be upon him said, don't long for encountering the enemy and supplicate to Allah to grant you security. But when you face the enemy, show patience and steadfastness. Even in the war legislated by Islam to deter aggression. Islam explicitly forbid the destruction of inhabited places and demolition of building. The companion of our Prophet, peace be upon him, used to give directions for those, for the army's leader. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to give directions for the army's leaders not to cut down trees, burn corpses, attack farmers in their farm or monks in their temples or kill women, children, or old people as long as they don't take part in the fighting. How much do we need to stand by the side of peace? Construction, not the side of war and destruction. Everything that calls for peace, construction, and development of the universe goes in line with the true religion. And everything that calls for killing, demolition, and destruction contradicts with all divine religions and even contradicts all morals, human values, norm, and international covenants. This requires that all of us to work together to consolidate and strengthen all the meaning of peace and to stand against the advocates of war and destruction in order to bring about happiness for all mankind and achieve security and peace. May Allah protect our country and all other countries of the whole world from all the evils and grant us the blessing of security and safety.